How's it going everybody? Complaints about reworks being too strong have been very common for the last few seasons. Whether this is a good or bad thing, I'll leave for each individual to decide. And it's not different for Orochi. And while Stormrush might not be the root cause for the complaints, there is some confusion surrounding that move. People have asked me for clarification a few times now, and I've also seen some blatantly wrong statements about it. So we're going to take another look at the move, and maybe then talk about whether it can be regarded as too strong. I know I've talked about some of this in the rework video already, so a few things will be repeated here. Let's talk numbers first. All three sides of the move have now been standardized in terms of speed. It is a 600ms heavy attack from your own point of view. It does however present a hidden indicator for your opponent, making it 366ms. A hidden indicator means that the animation of the attack already plays, but the red indicator is not shown just yet. This is where some of the confusion stems from as people still remember the CCU and that also had some hidden indicator and animation cutoffs. So let's look at it frame by frame then. We know it is a 600ms move. This means that I can see my opponent's stamina drain 500ms before the attack would hit me. This is when normally the indicator would show up and the animation starts to play. With Stormrush's additional hidden indicator, this means that I only see the animation now. As you might have deduced already, the animation barely helps you. Top might ever so slightly be a tell, but left or right is really hard to distinguish before the indicator appears. Well, I'd say it's impossible actually. So what we are looking at is an ever so slightly faster 500ms light. The indicator is just 33ms shorter. What you do have is a tell though. You do know that Storm Rush is coming because of the wind up. It is like a combo light without the heavy alternative. Either the attack comes out or it's fainted. Which also means that blocking and parrying share a reaction window here. You see the red indicator you can heavy that side. Now, what you need to keep in mind is that the length of the animation varies depending on the distance of the two players. This does include the timing of the stamina drain. I doubt anyone is looking at it, but it's worth mentioning nonetheless. So, is the move reactable? In a vacuum, yes. On PC, with above average reaction times, it is in the realms of reactable. The same goes for new gen consoles with a really good reaction. Old gen consoles are shit out of luck, as so often. The extra delay makes it 100% unreactable. When we look at it in conjunction with the whole mix up, meaning kick, forward dodge light, and so on, then the story is a little different. Multiple undodgeable moves and the bash make it a very efficient mix up, and it makes Storm Rush a very strong tool in it. We've done this test in the initial testing round video, so let's repeat it. Can you interrupt Storm Rush when it is done mid combo with a recovery cancel? Because out of neutral, you can easily throw a light to interrupt it, and the Orochi can feint to neutral to parry. So Storm Rush is not a great opener, but it does work in chain under certain circumstances. On light hit stun, the move can be interrupted. Most important thing to keep in mind here, the guaranteed light after every opener does convert whatever hit stun you applied into a light hit stun. If you want your Storm Rush to not be interruptible, you need to not throw the light after an opener heavy. So it pays off to know what sort of hit stun your attacks have when playing this hero, especially since Ubisoft recently changed some of them on every rework, for Orochi namely the zone attack and the heavy finisher. For Storm Rush, what you also need to keep in mind is that it has different entry timings depending on dodge direction, forward dodge enters the stance at 100ms and back dodge at 300ms. So the forward version is preferable when using the move in chain. But I want to get back to the interrupting of the move. It is a very common advice and also a sound one. The fainting of Storm Rush doesn't feel very precise, for the lack of a better term. Fainting slightly too early or not fainting at all because you've delayed it too much is actually quite common. But nevertheless, parrying or deflecting the interrupt attempts is definitely possible as long as you faint at the correct timing. Then, as mentioned before, the addition of being able to enter Storm Rush from a forward dodge allows Orochi to use it as a chasing tool. Unlike Shamans or Berserkers, this one seems to have a maximum run distance and then the move is performed. 
there are no long running chases, but instead you need to repeatedly recovery cancel back into it. The speed of Storm Rush is fast enough to catch up though, and eventually you will reach with the attack. So let's finish this with a problematic property and then afterwards quickly talk about the overall strength. Multiple Orochis using Storm Rush can't stun lock a target because of the way Hitstone currently works with it. Question now is, if this is purely a multi-pick issue or if it allows for other problematic ganks as well. Ubisoft has been addressing moves that do not follow the usual pinning rules, so I'm sure they're already looking into this as well. Until they figure out a solution, enjoy this rather simple gank. Alright then, damage wise, Storm Rush is a bit on the high side. We're looking at 16 plus the guaranteed 4 if you opt to use the light. And this can then further be boosted with Slip Through. Considering the other properties that we've outlined before, speed, mix up potential, and the fact it counts as a heavy attack, makes this a move that doesn't carry all that much risk in relation to the amount of damage it does. At worst, you'll need to light for it. But maybe the fact that it can be interrupted in many instances does make up for it. You guys let me know because I rarely see complaints about the move itself. And that about covers it I think. Some of these things were quite obvious, others not so much. Breaking down a move hopefully helped you guys to understand it better, when and how to use it more efficiently. Let me know if anything is still unclear. Hope the video was helpful. Thanks for watching. Later everybody.